Welcome or welcome back to this channel. It's Resident Internet Psychic Medium, a spiritual advisor, Mystic Rain. And today I'm going to be going over more questions about mediumship. So this is a big one, the how, right? How do mediums actually connect with spirit? I touched on this briefly in the last video that I posted about mediumship. However, I did not really go into specifics about it. So long story long, uh, it's different for everybody. <laughs> there are many different skills, right? Everything about mediumship, about being a psychic or an intuitive or whatever you want to use to, to classify what it is that you are, because the, the words are always changing based on the era, is a skill. Mediumship is a skill. And mediums have psychic skills. That's how they're picking up on the information. And so I'm saying it very carefully because not all psychics are mediums, but all mediums are psychics, right? You need to use a psychic skill in order to be a medium because you need to receive the message and then give the message and that is coming from your psychic abilities. There are many different psychic skills. You can be a clairvoyant, that is a psychic skill. You can be clairaudient, that is a psychic skill. You can be clairsentient, that is a, a psychic skill. There are so many clairs and here's the thing, not everybody has every Claire. Some people may have every Claire, but there is usually a Claire or two that's more developed or stronger than the other Claire's. Why is it more developed or stronger? Maybe the person practiced it a little bit more, or maybe it's just naturally stronger or naturally better, right? For example, one of my really strong Claire's is, uh, is Clear Audience. I was Clear Audience prior to me being any of the other Claire's. I can hear very well. When I hear spirit, it's like hearing you. It's like talking to you. It's like having a conversation on the phone. It's very clear. I can hear them talking, but not everyone can hear, right? Some people see, they're clairvoyant, but there's many ways to see. Some people may see spirit physically with their physical eyes. Some people may see spirit with the mind's eye. Now, what is seeing spirit with the mind's eye look like, right? Let's say you are in a park on a bench. You may look off to the left and you're looking at a beautiful little field with cute little flowers in it. Your physical eye may see only flowers, but your mind's eye will see the field and then someone standing in it, right? You're just seeing it with the eye here, not a physical eye, but it's different for different people. Some people, you see both ways with the physical eye and the mind's eye right? Some people can sense that spirit is there. And all energy is information. Messages move in energy. And so they may be picking up on the messages based off of how they're actually feeling. Some people don't even do it that way. Sometimes they feel, but they feel in the body, right? So if they're communicating with spirit, spirit may put a feeling in them, right? About a certain event or a certain situation. And that is how the person picks up on it. Some people can smell, right? Some people go, what smell? Yes, there is clear smelling. You can smell. Some people have ghostly smells, okay? And so they receive information this way. Some people can taste. You didn't know that was a thing, but you can taste. Your senses that you have in the physical world work beyond the physical world. And so you can use the same senses in other ways. Everyone uses different senses and it's based off of what's stronger, whether it was practiced or whether it's natural. It's also based off of pre preference. You can tell spirit how you want them to interact with you. You can tell them because maybe you, you like to be interacted in a certain way because it's easier for you. For me, I don't, want, I don't want to see with my physical eye. I've always said this. I think it's a little bit scary, but I'm okay with you, with you talking. So I'm okay with me hearing what you have to say. I just don't want you standing in front of me while you're saying it. Another question is, how do I know that spirit is trying to communicate with me? So one, spirit communication is a lot more subtle than a physical communication. And it's subtle not because I think that the messages or the communication themselves are inherently like like a like a struggle thing it's because of where the messages are coming from it's coming from the other side of the veil so you've got some signal interference that's there and that can make it a little bit harder to perceive and so people who are psychics because remember all mediums are psychics 
they have an ability to, to see things and perceive things that most people are not actually paying attention to. And the signs and the messages are usually in this thing. It's, it is that one thing that was a little bit out of place, that one sentence that was heard three times instead of two. It's, it's this one little area of, so, of subtlety that turns a coincidence into a pattern. I always say that um, if it happens twice, it's a coincidence. If it happens three times, it's a pattern, right? Mediums are very good at seeing those little things that turn something from a coincidence into a pattern. Now, why are they so good at it? Again, it can either be a natural skill or something that is practiced and taught. You can be trained to be a medium, right? So for me, I was naturally a medium. It scared the shit out of me, but I was trained on how to be a medium, right? I wasn't just naturally out here communing with spirits. It wasn't until after receiving formal training that I was then the medium, right? And so in that training, you learn how to pick up on those, those signs. You learn how to pick up on the symbols. And so how you know they're communicating will change from person to person, but it's happening through signs and symbols. And so for some people, it could be you're driving down the street, you see a billboard, the billboard has a saying on it, then you get to work and randomly somebody at work says what you're about to say, then you come home and then like somebody in the house repeats the words verbatim and now suddenly it's happened three times, right? And then they go, wait a minute, there's something, there's something that's, that's here. Or they may notice an animal that, that, that greets them that would not normally greet them, that does not live in the neighborhood, right? It's something that's an outlier. A medium is really good at finding the outlier and then identifying that outlier as a symbol. But you're being communicated with in symbols. When spirit is getting in touch, it's symbolic. Now, why is it symbolic? Spirits don't have mouths. They can't talk to you in the way that I'm talking to you. So they have to find another use of language, another way of communicating through language. And so the easiest way to communicate through language is through symbols. That's why you can go to one country and then see a bathroom and know it's a bathroom and then go to a different country with a different language and then know that it's a bathroom. Why? Because it's symbols. You have a boy sign on it or a girl sign on it, or maybe you have a wheelchair sign on it. It's symbolic. It's a symbolic language. And so how spirit communicates is the same way. Mediums are really good at picking up on the symbols and recognizing the symbolic language when it happens, but it's symbolic. So if you are going throughout your journey, maybe you're new and you start to notice symbols. Maybe you start to notice butterflies and there's not a lot of butterflies in your area. And maybe there's this one particular blue butterfly that's always flying close to you and always coming near you and you feel like it's greeting you, but you don't know why, right? Things like that, things that are symbolic. Now, this is where newbie mediums or psychics go wrong is that they will then go to somebody else. Did you see that? Did you see that? It's a sign, right? And then that person goes, yeah, right. I mean, I don't really think so, but yeah, okay. And then what happens is it then causes you to doubt what you've just picked up on or what you've just perceived. It's not that you picked up wrong or incorrectly or that you didn't perceive what you did. It's just that the message was for you. It wasn't for them. And so if you go to them saying, well, do you see the message? And the message was delivered to you. And then they tell you they don't see the message. You can't get upset that they never saw the message because it was delivered to you, sweetie, not them. Next question. How can you develop your mediumship abilities? There are two ways to develop it and you're gonna hate what I'm about to say because it's not gonna sound fun. It's gonna sound like a lot of work and that you have to discipline and that's just not fun or cute, right? It's not demure, it's not cutesy. Those two things is actually meditation and grounding and let me explain to you why. I thought some of you may even thought that I would have said protection, but I won't, I, protection for me is actually not on that list. In old school psychic school, right? Because I was trained the old school way. You learn how to meditate and you learn how to ground. And that me the meditation part of the lesson to me was by far the worst part of psychic training I ever did, right? And that was because there were times when I would go to class and they would put me in an hour long meditation and I'm sitting there thinking that I'm about to wield a wand and I'm in meditation for an hour and I'm bored. And not only am I bored, I'm itchy right? I'm itchy. My mind is thinking about other things because I'm bored. I'm just like not having fun. And this wasn't the fun part of mediumship, right? And then same thing with grounding because grounding is such a meditative practice. Grounding your energy, centering your energy, stabilizing your energy. And one major way you ground is by tethering your energy to the earth. 
spirit that you would be communicating with is not tethered here, right? They're floating or they're tethered to, uh, to places that are on the other side of the veil. But you are still human and you need to tether to the earth when you're doing this work. And that requires a lot of meditation in order to get it right. Now, years later, it wasn't until I realized that meditation and grounding is how you discipline and then identify your energy. Meditation is how you discipline your energy, right? So it's less about having no thoughts. I'm, I'm, I'm going to think nothing. It's not really about that. It's about disciplining the thoughts you allow to come through. So let's say you have an unpleasant thought. It's about having the ability in that moment, in that present moment, to be like, thank you for visiting but your time is up, and then replacing it with something positive. Because thought is your energy, what you think you create. And so when you spend a lot of time in your in your in meditation, you are disciplining your energy and you're disciplining your creation. It is the meditation that helps you ground more effectively and help and more efficiently. The more you meditate, the faster it is to actually ground. And when you're grounding, it's also a meditative exercise, but again, it's you tethering yourself to this plane, to earth. It is like envisioning that there are roots from a tree, that you are a tree and that there is roots that are coming out of you and then tethering themselves into the earth so you can't fly off. So your spiritual energy is not flying off everywhere, right? It's a way for you to be able to discern what is your energy and what is the energy of somebody else. What is the energy of something else? When you meditate often and you're always practicing your grounding um, ritual, you can go to work and immediately know that Veronica that usually riles you up and pushes your buttons, it's harder for her to push your, your buttons because you're grounded. Veronica is probably not grounded. Her energy is all over the place. But if you are a tree and you're rooted and you're now and who you are, it's real difficult to knock over a tree. To me, these are the two most important things when developing your mediumship is learning how to discipline your energy and learning what your energy is. Because as you're disciplining your energy and you're learning how to do that, by default, you understand what energy you're actually disciplining. You understand what's yours. This actually will increase mediumship ability because one, you then know that you're communicating with a, with a spiritual being that's not you right? So a lot of beginners will say, well, how do I know? Like, how do I know I'm actually picking up on something? When you've disciplined your energy and you've learned how to identify what energy belongs to you, it's very, very easy and very clear to then identify an energy that's not yours. If it becomes too much, and too much can be too happy, too sad, too excited, um, or just too high vibration because they have a different kind of vibrational frequency and their frequency can sometimes be higher than like a human's frequency. And so when you are communicating with something that's a higher frequency than of, than of the humans, it can, it can raise your frequency up to a point that is uncomfortable, not bad or dangerous. It's just humans don't naturally exist at that frequency. And so it can feel uncomfortable. And so when you know how to discipline your own energy, you can put your energy back to where it's supposed to go. So if it starts raising because you're not, you, you're not asking it to, it's just raising because you're communicating and you don't like it, you can quickly put it back down. You can quickly ground it back down to the earth or put it back into a state that you like it at because it's your energy, you've learned your energy, you can identify your energy and you can discipline it. I'm going to wrap with this last question. What should I do if I'm interested in becoming a medium? You should find some training right? There are, depending on where you live in your region, there are things called mystery schools. And these mystery schools teach my mystery practices, which, they, which is what they used to be called, or occult practices. There are actual physical institutions that you can go to that will teach you how to develop the skill, right? Um, a mediumship skill, but there's also institutions that go well beyond that. Any form of psychic skill, um, palm reading, tarot card reading, anything that is a mystery or belongs to an esoteric or occult practice, there are schools that actually teach you how to do this. And because of the day that we are in, they are a lot more accessible because you can now Zoom them. You can take online classes as opposed to having to be there physically. Back in my day, that wasn't a thing yet. Yeah, you had to physically attend, right? 
but a lot has changed in the new age and since COVID. And so you can now attend these schools online. And the reason why I think that this is valuable is because not all countries have mystery schools, but if you can, if you can attend it online, then maybe you can work out some kind of situation where you watch the playback if it was recorded, or maybe you tune in by a Zoom while it's being taught physically, or maybe you attend a physical actual class. Find yourself some training, find yourself a mentor or a teacher, and then vet them prior to using them. So if it's a situation where it's not a school, and even if it is a school, Google it. You should be able to Google it, and there should be a Wikipedia page. And if you can't find other information outside of their website about it, then mm, maybe go to a different source. It does not mean that that's not a good school. There's just more established schools. Because these schools teach mystery teachings, they've been around for hundreds of years. And so find one of those, right? But if that is not something that's accessible to you, get yourself a teacher and find some kind of one-on-one. -on -one. And if you do find a one-on-one -on -one situation, vet your teacher, vet your mentor. Ask them, where did you go? Where did you train? Where did you get your training? How do you know this information? See if you can meet them for a one-on-one -on -one and then feel the vibes. If they feel sketch, don't do it. If they feel off, don't do it. If they feel scary, don't do it. They start talking about, oh, these entities and these negative beings, don't do it because that is not how old school mediumship is taught. And it's been taught that way for a number of years, like hundreds of years. And so it's taught that way for a reason. And so if you have someone who's then trying to teach you about negative entities, that's not how old school psychics and mediumships and mediums were trained. And so that means you have someone that's going against the code, right? So you want to feel safe. You want to feel like you're in good hands. If you don't feel safe or that you're in good hands or that someone knows what they're talking about and if they don't have the answer, that they are someone who seems like they would go find it. If you don't have this, then don't do it. Don't do it with them. Take your time, be patient, and continue to search. And then in the meantime, you can find books. There's so many books that are available that, these days. But again, same thing. If you are reading the book and then you suddenly get the, a bad vibe, put the book down and get a new one. That book is not for you because it should not have any bad vibes. Old school psychic and mediumship is not about bad vibes. It's about love and it's about connection and it's about understanding. And if you start receiving information that's anything other than that, then then go back, go, go back to go and collect $200. So I thought that was a fun topic to go over. I'm going to wrap the video here. And as always, if you like what you see, please subscribe to this channel. And if we don't meet again, I'll see you next lifetime.